occasion. It's, it's November 18th, 2020. And today is the anniversary of Srila uh, Prabhupada's Tiro Baba Mahotsava, the disappearance day. And uh, uh, we're here in Alachua, Florida with Mother Melanie and Ryan Bakhtaeze. <clears throat> And uh, online participating, there's uh, Gajendra and uh, Sarah and um, uh, Feynman from Wales, Kara, also here in Alachua. And we have several Vaishnav visitors from Singapore, uh, Padmavati, Shiva Kumar, Sudarshan. Mataji, Hare Krishna. And uh, we have visitors from even more exotic places like Melrose, Florida, <laughs> Lakshmi Priya. And we're, we're going to read from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Leela, Chapter 12, Text 10. Adi Leela, Chapter 12, Text 10. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nichinanda Jai Beta Chandra Jai Beta Chandra Jai Gora Bhakta Vrinda Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nichinanda Jai Veta Chandra Jai Gora Bhakta Vrinda Chaitanya Charitamrita, Chapter 12, Text 10. Acharyera, Acharyera, Mata, Mata, Ye, Ye, Se, Ye, Mata, Mata, Sara, Tanra Agya Langhi Chale Seita Asara Tanra Agya Langhi Chale Seita Asara Acharyera Mataye Se Matasara Acharyera Mataye Se Matasara Tanra Agya Langhi Chale Seita Asara Tanra Agya Langhi Chale Seita Asara Acharyera Mataye Se Matasara Acharyera Mataye Se Matasara Tanra Agya Langhi Chale Seta Asara Tanra Agya Langhi Chale Seta Asara Achalyera Matae Se Matasara Achalyera Matae Se Matasara Tanra Gyalangi Chale Se Ta Asara Tanra Gyalangi Chale Se Ta Asara 
आचार्य रामात ये से मात सारा आचार्य रामात ये से मात सारा Would someone online like to uh, chant the verse? It's on the board here behind me. I think you can see it online. Probably not. Okay. There's a way to do that. <laughs> okay. We'll go. We'll go to the word for word. Acharya of the spiritual master Advaita Prabhu. Of the spiritual master Advaita Prabhu. Mata. Mata. Opinion. Opinion. Yay. Yay. What is? What is? Say. 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 Mata. 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 Opinion. Opinion. Sara. Sara. Active, Active principle. Tanra. Tanra. Is. Mm -hmm. Agya, order, order. Langhi, transgressing, transgressing. Chole, he comes, say, that, that. Ka. Ka. however, Ka. Asara. Asara, useless, useless. translation. The order of the spiritual master is the active principle in spiritual life. Anyone who disobeys the order of the spiritual master immediately becomes useless. Purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Here is the opinion of Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. Persons who strictly follow the orders of the spiritual master are useful in executing the will of the Supreme. Whereas persons who deviate from the strict order of the spiritual master are useless. Short verse and purport. <laughs> but there's a lot there. Om Ganati Mirandasya Gananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Niditanyena Tasmai Sri Gurvena Maha Sri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stavitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Upakadamayam Dadati Svapadanti Kam Vandeham Sri Guru Sri Utapadakamalam Sri Guru and Vaishnavamscha Sri Rupam Sagratatam Saganaragnatanditam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Savadutam Parijana Saitan Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sagana Lalita Sri Vishakandi Tamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchan Gauradhe Radhe Vindavaneshwari Vishabhano Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Kriye Vansha Kaupati Yubhyascha Kipa Sindhu Devacha Patitanan Bhavane Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Namo Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Sri Advaita Gadadar Sri Vasari Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine, 
Namaste Sarasvati Devi Goravani Pracharini Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Desha Parine Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila Chapter 12, Text 10 Acharya Mataye Se Matasara Tanra Agyalan Pichale Se Asara The order of the spiritual master, the active principle in spiritual life. Anyone who disobeys the order of the spiritual master immediately becomes useless. And in the purport, Paul Peter writes, uh, persons who strictly follow the orders of the spiritual master are useful in executing the will of the supreme, whereas persons who deviate from the strict order of the spiritual master are useless. Um, okay, so this part of the 12th chapter, uh, it's it actually, it's discussing about Sri Advaita Acharya and specifically the disappearance of um, the great Acharya Sri Advaita Acharya, who's of course a member of our Panchatattva. And in the purports around here, probably it's talking about the disappearance pastime of uh, Srila Bhakti Santa Saraswati. Okay, and uh, so, uh, so Asara means useless. And Sara is translated as the active principle in spiritual life. So, okay, well, it doesn't, in a sense, it doesn't feel good. It's not flattering to think that anything I've done, all that I've accomplished, um, that's been outside of the guidance of his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, is useless. That does not stroke my false ego the way it wants to be stroked. Um, and <clears throat> what Krishna Skarabhas Goswami Shiva Prabhupada aren't caring much about my false ego getting stroked. So that's unfortunate. Uh, so, yes, so uh, but this is just, um, this is just giving as it is, like, Srila Prabhupada humbly entitled Bhagavad Gita as it is. As it is. That to use an analogy, oops, to use an analogy we uh, sometimes use, uh, used it in the recent Five Principles course. That, yeah, so any anything outside of eternal activity, it can be compared to like rearranging the chairs on the deck of the Titanic. Just uh, put on mute here. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> so, of course, if in terms of the modes of nature, if what we're trying to do to help people, help society, if it's if it's at least in the mode of goodness, Prabhupada says we're doing some good. And to do substantial good, enduring good, the sort of good that will never be crushed by time, that requires um, that requires um, surrendering to uh, serving the. Uh, um, the sublime, insalable instructions of Krishna, of Krishna. And the way Krishna works, the way Krishna says, one who sees, one who regards himself or herself as my devotee is not my devotee. One who sees or regards uh, himself as the devotee of my devotee, he's my devotee. So Krishna established, Tadviganartam Sagrume Babigacha. Krishna establishes, <clears throat> Krishna establishes that uh, we, we serve him through uh, the pure devotee. And the Acharya are currently through the Prampara. In my case, it's uh, Srila Prabhupada are currently to the, prom the Prampara. Um, otherwise, like, of course, we, we do have a direct relationship with God. We do have a direct relationship with Krishna and all knowledge is within. We covered this in the recent group coaching. All knowledge is within. That's true. Spirit soul is spirit. We are built of chit potency. We are built of consciousness. 
we are conscious and we are consciousness. It's a quote from Shri Prabhupada, purports the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita. We are conscious and we are consciousness. So we are built of knowledge. So why do I need a teacher? I'm built of knowledge. That's what I'm made of. I am wisdom personified. Okay. So, um, so actually that's true. That's true. At the same time, the conclusion. So who needs a teacher? Look at me, look at me. I'm a, I'm a shining lamp of knowledge, spirit, soul. Mm. Well, okay, so then there's, there's a disconnect in that conclusion. <laughs> so it's true, as spirit, souls, we're, we're filled with gyan and bhyan and all the sublime, all the 26 qualities of a devotee. That's true. How connected am I with that? I use the analogy, okay, like, we can compare the spirit soul to a diamond. A diamond is always bright and effulgent and strong and radiant. And a diamond can get covered by dust, dirt, thick layers of mud. And so we've allowed our diamond, it didn't just happen, we've allowed our diamond to get covered. Um, we've run after the mud. So it's the diamond is still shining and bright at the same time. And so this process of spiritual life, of transformation, of consciousness, it's an uncovering process. And so, yeah, the spirit soul is full of knowledge in full connection with super soul. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm not particularly connected with that. I've allowed the diamond spirit soul to get covered. And so... And so, so it's true. It's true that the knowledge coming from the spiritual master through his books, through his body, through following his instructions, through his lectures, it, it awakens the knowledge that is within. That's true. That, that is true. And so the spiritual master awakens the knowledge from within. Jam Tamaha, the Shine Yatma Bhava still, then deep in a basvata. The Krishna says, I dwelling within the heart, destroy with the shining lamp of knowledge, the darkness born of ignorance. And so Krishna does that from within for the sincere soul and, and through the agency of his pure devotee. So through hearing, through hearing from Srila Prabhupada and Srila Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami. And Srila Shukadev Goswami and Srila Vyasadev, then we awaken, we awaken that eternal knowledge that is within. And, and so otherwise, on our own, the idea is, well, why do I need a teacher? I've got, I've got God within. So true, true. And then again, how how connected am I with that? And that's kind of the point of conditioned life. That's kind of the point of conditioned life. I've, I've shown that I'm dedicated to forgetfulness. I've shown that I'm dedicated to, to rejecting Krishna, to rejecting God. And, and um, I've, I've, I've um, proved my commitment. And then it's a virtuous quality. I proved my commitment to. Um, um, to show that I'm the center and I'm, I'm, I'm Ishvara Oham, Aham Bogi, Siddham Balaban Sufi, I'm the, I'm, I'm, I'm the controller, I'm the enjoyer, mm. not Krishna. Who is Krishna anyway? Doesn't even exist. Okay. So I'm committed to this mentality. So to awaken that knowledge of the soul and the connection with super soul, to awaken that, then that, well, we can say, it helps to be guided. It helps to be guided by the pure devotee. But it doesn't just help. Krishna is quite um, emphatic. No, it's necessary. It's necessary. It's necessary that we get a teacher just like if we want to become an expert in physics or engineering or tennis or art, then we hear from someone. We hear from someone who's. Um, uh, um, who's expert. So we hear from someone who has not 
gone to forgetfulness, someone who is fully awakened in their pure devotional service to the Supreme Personality of God. So, Hare Krishna. Welcome everyone online. We have an international group, many Vaishnava visitors from Singapore, um, different places. So, okay. And so, mm. Chula Bhakti Vinod Thakur, one of his poems, he says, he, he reasons ill who tells that Vaishnavs die when thou art living still in sound. Vaishnavs die to live and living try to spread the holy name around. So that relates to the disappearance of Tasman. He's dead, he's dead. Well, no, that's uh, so, so actually there's no death for any spirit soul. And particularly the pure devotee, the pure devotee, <clears throat> um, um, Prabhupada would say many times, I will live forever in my books. Prabhupada emphasized many, 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 many times, many, many times that the physical presence called Bapu is relatively less important. It's not essential. It's not essential. We can say there's a type of Bapu, let's call it pre-November 14th, 1977 Bapu with Srila Prabhupada. And then also we can say, so Prabhupada's Bapu is no longer available. At the same time, Prabhupada makes it very clear. He's fully present in his Morti form and his photograph. That's also a Bapu form. So it's a different Bapu form. There's so many things. Prabhupada emphasizes that Vani, what he calls vibrational association or preceptorial association. That's what Bhaktivinoda's talking about. Um, <clears throat> when thou art living still in sound, that that's, that's essential, the vibrational association. That's essential. We follow the vibrational association, then we're useful in serving God. Otherwise, in the name of serving God, if we're not connected with the vibrational association of the pure devotee currently to the Prampara, then, um, yeah, some, some form of rearranging the chairs on the deck of the Titanic. So, a couplet from a poem from a, some English poet, Wadsworth or something. Lives, lives of great men all remind us we can make our lives sublime and departing leave behind us footprints in the sands of time. So, um, so to, to, for our lives to, to leave an enduring legacy, not just for a day or two or a few generations. Okay. I had a, a cousin and he compiled a family tree for the bank side of my family. There's the wolf side and then there's the bank side. The family tree going back to, going back to, Russia, 1850, and things like that, like that, and things like relatives. And different. Okay, um, <clears throat> my great arist aristocratic heritage, <clears throat> Dora Bank. Okay, so um, yeah, so so um, all of this it gets um, it gets crushed in time. It gets crushed in time, even if we have a legacy for 311 trillion. Old, 40 billion years, which is the lifetime of the universe. It's, it's just an exhalation for the Mahavishnu. So enduring service, we're following Srila Prabhupada and we, we chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. We dedicate ourselves to distributing prasham. The holy name, Prabhupada's books. This is eternal activity. And then we're 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 really we're really creating enduring, eternal, never dying footprints in the sands of time. In the sands of time, we sing each morning. This is an interesting point because okay, so Sara is described as the active principle, 
And that could be understood as divyagyan, the active principle of the process of initiation, the active principle of spiritual life. That's that um, <clears throat> thou art living still in sound. It's that it, 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 it sound vibration, sound, so that the transcendental sound vibration coming from the pure devotee. It's infa infallible sound vibration, infallible knowledge filled. We, as we like to say, that such sound vibration, each syllable reveals truth and simultaneously it is identical with the truth that it reveals. That's why what, whatever we intellectually understand or not, we're transformed by exposing ourselves to that transcendental sound vibration. That's Divi Gan, that's Diksha. As I sometimes, I find it curious because every morning we sing, Takudan, Dilo Ye, Janme Janme Prabhu say, Divi Gan, Ride Prokashito. He opens my eyes with transcendental knowledge. He fills our heart with transcendental knowledge. He is my Lord, Lord, birth after birth. This is the spirit of the pure devotee, not even looking for liberation, not even looking for relief from material miseries. Mm. Mm. Um, mm. 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 Come in, Mama John, many John, many Sri Bhavta, Bhakti, Hitu, Gutai, Lord Chaitanya, emulating the spirit, the mood of the pure devotee, just looking, looking, just looking to serve his spiritual master birth after birth. That's the mood, Narutam Das, Bhakti, John, many John, many Prabhu say. And so, and so, Divyagan, so Prabhupada, he defined Divyagan, that is diction, that's, that's the active principle, that's the active principle. So, Actually, centers all over the world. They say, Divyagan Ride Prokashito. And then some places they say, Prabhupada can't give diksha. And then we sing, You're, um, you, you fill our hearts with diksha. And philosophically, it's impossible for you to give diksha. Better to not even think about it or just like you just go and sing. So, but it, it's working pretty well because people aren't thinking about it. So, okay, so, Div so the Divyagan, this, this is the essence of the transcendental process. This, this is the Divyagan, with Prabhupada Divyagan, that is the essence of the process of, of diction. And so, um, yeah, so my, my main point is, so we can take this day, we can take this day, uh, the anniversary of the uh, appearance of Srila Prabhupada, we can take this day to to increase our to make a, a, de a determination to increase our direct hearing from Srila Prabhupada through his books, through his lectures, through following his instructions, through hearing his conversations, reading his letters, increase our direct hearing so that we're more and more able to make the distinction between Sara which is useful, useful active principle of spiritual life, and asar, useless. And because Prabhupada's making the point here, not just in this verse, but in this section, Prabhupada's making the point uh, that, that's good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, um, that. So even within the frame, even within the apparent framework of the mission of the acharya, there are those who are useful because they're actually following, and there are those who are useless or worse than useless. smriti kurnadi panchrachya which says that so-called devotional service not done according to parampara, uh, according to Shruti, Smriti, Puranas, like that, then it's actually, an, it becomes a disturbance. It's worse than useless. Like that. So Prabhupada's making the point that, uh, that even in the, in often upon the disappearance of the Acharya, in the name of the Acharya, there's, there's a lot of apasadanta, asara stuff going on. And he's pointing it out in regards to Advaita Acharya's mission, 
Bhakti Siddhanta's mission and his own mission. And, and so, so, you know, we, we get to be responsible. Let me more and more hear directly from Srila Prabhupada to know, to know, um, yeah, what is, what is the sublime, infallible, transcendental sound vibration coming from Srila Prabhupada? And, and what is, what is authorized and authentic and what's a deviation. And so that other, even, even when Prabhupada, even when his pre November 14th, 1977 Vapu, it's quite a term, but it works. Even, even when that form of Vapu was here, he would be writing letters saying, saying, um, saying, uh, I'm hearing so many things that Prabhupada said. <laughs> Prabhupada said, Prabhupada said, uh, it's better that you check it out whether Prabhupada actually said it and how did I mean it? So even, so what does speak of since 77? <laughs> it doesn't mean we need to just become depressed and hopeless. It means like, let's get, you know, let, let, let's get this more intent to hear from Prabhupada and to, to know what Prabhupada said. And what's the context? Hear Prabhupada's teachings, Prabhupada's teachings. Uh, learn, learn about Prabhupada's life. Learn, learn about Prabhupada's life. Um, I, I, again, even in pre-November 77, all of the types of deviations in the name of Prabhupada, they happened then, and Prabhupada dealt with it. Prabhupada dealt with it. Hmm. There was Gopi Bhava Club. <laughs> there was. And that was right, right under Prabhupada's nose. You know, maybe done. There was, there was one, and then you know, Prabhupada would rectify the devotees and continue with enthusiasm. There was one. Uh, this was before Gopi Bhava Club. The idea was there were some leaders, and they convinced a big chunk of the movement that Prabhupada has withdrawn his mercy. Um, because you haven't recognized that actually Prabhupada is Krishna himself. And so you, we're all just hopeless. You're hopeless, but we've realized it. Like that. <laughs> yeah. Now we're, we're not saying, because in most of these instances, the devotees became rectified and, they, and, and that's their credit. And like that. So we're, sorry, we're, it's not about getting into names or who, but the principle that Prabhupada's teaching us. In that particular instance, Prabhupada say, okay, look, we see the game here. The idea is, okay, Prabhupada is God himself. Pretty soon Prabhupada's gonna die. Then who gets to be God next? <laughs> Look, you know, we know psychology. And in the sense, you don't need that much transcendental insight to see what's going on here. <laughs> Prabhupada will die pretty soon. And then, oh, oh, guess who's good Krishna now? <laughs> so Prabhupada saw right through it like that. And these things are going on since 77. And we need to be, we need to be deep in the philosophy and deep in the spirit of Prabhupada to make distinctions about what's useless and what's useful. Yeah, even on the managerial level, there was attempts to like when the, the, the idea when I just described when you haven't realized that Prabhupada's Krishna. The idea is uh, it, it's a form of Maya Bhaya. And there was even on a managerial level, there were there were attempts again pre-November 77 to make everything one. Let, let's centralize everything. We we got we got management gurus who know how to do these things. Let's centralize everything. It was a form of Mayava, because Prabhupada set up kind of like a perfect Achintya Beta Beta Tattva system where there's some centralization for a few things that are practical, otherwise encourage independent thinking and independent know-how on the part of the temple president or the part of the Sankirtan leader on the part of each individual devotee. But there was no, let's centralize everything and then people won't need to think. Hmm. Then, that was sort of the idea. That was sort of the idea. And everyone can just kind of merge into one thing. Um, and then, well, and then, uh, so the idea of Avir Bhava and Tiro Bhava, Avir Bhava and Tiro Bhava, that's appearance and disappearance, is they're one, right? So all the pastimes of the pure devotee Acharya are transcendental, transcendentally inspired, transcendental for our instruction. Sure, 
they're like there's different like there's a different mood we think of Prabhupada rising at 1 a.m and dictating his purports for our benefit so there's a mood there it's one and it's different from Prabhupada jumping up and down dancing at Ratiyatra in London or New York oh, we, we, I, a follower of Prabhupada, we want to learn about here all his all his uh, uh, pastimes, the austerities, getting on the Jaladuta and joking with the devotees. And, yeah, I just heard a lecture yesterday in the car, and Prabhupada's like 69 in Montreal or New York, and, and Prabhupada's he's talking about Krishna in a very animated way. And, and he's just making the devotees laugh, just talking about Krishna. He's talking about yeah, the, the gopis and the colored boys. And, the, and all these residents of Vrindavan, they, they don't know philosophy. They're just loving Krishna, this boy. And you just feel Prabhupada's fully there. And, and everyone's captivated and absorbed. And then I heard another lecture the day before where Prabhupada was in this kind of like a quiet, sober, very great mood, and he was talking about he was talking about some Sahajis write books in very vulgar ways about Krishna Radharani and the gopis. And you can see that he was painting his heart to see this mess and this representation. So this is all transcendental for our instruction. And that's true with Srila Prabhupada's disappearance time, his 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 disappearance past him. His disappearance past them. And that's why, well, in definitely in some sectors, there have been attempts, there have been attempts to, to conceal and cover up and distort some aspects of Prabhupada's disappearance past them. So as followers of Prabhupada, um, naturally, just like we wanted, we want to know about Prabhupada in New York on the Upper East Side. And, 66 and Prabhupada and Butler, Pennsylvania. We want to know the facts, the truth about Prabhupada's disappearance past him. One, one thing in his disappearance past time that for, relates to a theme here, one thing I'll close with, and I'm glad to hear from you, Prabhu's. So at one point, uh, kind of in his final days there, uh, Prabhupada, Prabhupada referenced the um, the Ramayana. He did not he didn't directly he said, but he he said he he said um, he said so he said so um so uh, um, Ravana will kill or Ram will kill and and then some of the devotees said, well, what's Prabhupada referring to and then other devotees said Prabhupada is referring to the past time of Maricha. Maricha. And uh, so the pastime of Maricha in the Ramayana. Maricha was like the minister of defense for Ravana, or the minister of aggression, let's call it. And, and, and so Maricha understood who Ram and Lakshman were. <clears throat> and so, and this is on transcripts and recordings. And so, um, <clears throat> and so Ravana wanted Maricha, who was a magician with mystic power, shapeshifter, to go and arrange a trick to attract the Sita to the form of the golden, mystical, magical deer. And then Ravana could kidnap Sita. <clears throat> and so uh, Maricha was thinking, okay, if I go, if I go, I'm going to be killed by Ram. If I don't go, I'm going to be killed by Ravana. Okay, so, okay, so this is coming to an end one way or the other. And so Maricha thought, okay, it's more auspicious, it's glorious to be killed by Ram. Ram will kill or Ravana will kill. So Prabhupada referenced that kind of in his dying breaths. And uh, there's a particular context which we won't go into here. Maybe tonight at the evening program, who knows? But um, Prabhupada clearly was indicating 
and it wasn't like new, could we be able to gain a few of that within the framework of his mission, there's Ram and there's Ravan. It wasn't the first time he indicated there's Ram and there's Ravan. So we can take a look that in our attempts, in our attempts to serve Sri Prabhupada and his mission, to what extent, to what extent are we in Ram's camp? And where might we be in Ravana's camp? The, the Ravana principle, I mean, Ravana's a real historical figure, and the Ravana principle is, um, I'm going to enjoy Sita without Ram, get Ram out of the way. So the idea is Prabhupada's created something wonderful and very enjoyable. And there's transcendental enjoyment, but it can also be like, well, with, with the knowledge that Prabhupada gave me and the Shakti and the process and the philosophy, wow, I could, I could convince a lot of, could convince a whole lot of people that I'm great. I could be, I mean, there's, there's different ways that the Ravana mentality can creep in, even in our attempts, even in our attempts to serve within the framework of, of Prabhupada's mission. So we get to um, we get to look at that where, because what Prabhupada gave on behalf of Sri Bhakti Stunt and Krishna is it's the matchless gift, and it's not like any other gift can compare. And in that gift, well, there's a lot of shakti, there's a lot of potency, there's a lot of potency, and then what are we doing with that potency, whatever extent we've accumulated, and are we are we using it humbly in service? to Ram, to Prabhupada, or are we, um, have we maybe consciously or less than consciously entered into, into an enjoying spirit and, and enjoying mood that yes, I'm the controller of this project, this temple, this, uh, or to what extent are we saying is I'm, 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 I'm I'm a street sweeper in the market of the holy name. Mm -hmm. That's a, a metaphor given by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Nam Hat, the market of the holy name. And it's quite elaborate. I haven't read about it extensively. But there's all sorts of roles in the market of the holy name. And at the end of his depiction, he describes in my role, Kedranatta, Bhaktivinoda Thakur. My role is, I am the street sweeper, keeping things clean. And so to keep things clean, on behalf of Srila Prabhupada, we need to know Prabhupada. Mm -hmm. And what is what is clean distinction and what is a deviation that might look glamorous, that might look devotional. Um, okay. So this verse reads, Acharyera Mati Se Matasara Tanya Agya Lanki Tale Se Ta Asara. The order of the spiritual master is the active principle in spiritual life. Anyone who disobeys the order of the spiritual master immediately becomes useless. Hare Krishna. Thank you for listening. Thanks for your attention and presence. I welcome at this time if anyone would like to share any comments or ask any questions. Question. Uh, Eze. So at one point, um, during the class, you mentioned how devotional service that's not done uh, properly in accordance with, uh, with Shastra can be actually detrimental. And I'm wondering how this fits in with um, like the, the different levels of like, okay, because my tendency is either, either I'm doing it perfectly or I'm doing nothing at all. Mm -hmm. So then I know there's like you can have devotional service in different modes. And even I mean, if you're in the mode of goodness and there's like, I think recently you sent an email how even like there's pure devotees, but there's even gradations of pure yeah. devotees. Yeah. So how does this, how do these two fit together? It's like, in a way, what I heard you say now is either it's perfect or you're like doing harm. How do these two fit together? Okay, thanks. Th thank you, Bhakti Azay. Thanks for your question. I, I appreciate that. Yes. Okay, yeah, and, and I can see they can seem like, yeah, it's perfect. like they're they're enmeshed together. It, it's actually two different principles, and it's important to make the distinction. So I'm glad you're asking. 
and for the opportunity to discuss about it and clarify for myself. So, um, so one thing, like there's the nine stages in devotional service at Al Shraddha, Pasadu, Sangatra, Bhajana Kriya. Rupa Goswami described Prabhupada often quotes starting with just a little bit like we might not follow anything or like that, but we have some respect for those who are practicing bhakti yoga or like, hey, you got you guys are pretty cool. Yeah, I'll come to a program, like a beginning, a beginning. And then then like that ninth stage is prema bhakti, that uh, that full spontaneous loving feeling and loving devotional action. And then in between, there's cleansing the heart, coming to some steadiness, begin to get a real taste where rising early and changing up, it doesn't feel so much like an austerity, accent the taste for it, and stuff like that. Okay, so 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 there's that. And then you know, someone who is kind of like, yeah, okay, okay. Like I just talked to someone recently, and she was, I'm going to chant one round per day. Okay, yeah, I'm going to chant one round per day. She has enough trust. I'm going to try. I'm going to chat one around today. Or maybe someone decides, yeah, I'll become vegetarian. And I'll, I'll put a, I'll alter a Prabhupada. And at least one time per week, I'm going to offer my food. And okay, so we're, we're in the process. We're in the process. And then, and then okay, let's get that. So great. It's a, for most everyone, it's a gradual process, definitely for me. All right, then that's kind of like different than it's kind of like different than someone who's kind of in the name of the process, um, doing something that's actually not the process. Okay, that that's the distinction. In the name of the process, um, uh, yeah, I mean, like you know, like I could I could make up a process here. Okay, everyone, close your eyes. Imagine you're in Goloka Vrindavan. And I just start making stuff up. Okay, and go, yeah, wow. And then we just all got absorbed. And I just start making up pastimes that aren't bona fide, aren't authorized like that. Prabhupada gives an example. So, so that's the distinction. That's the distinction. One thing like, yeah, I'm going to take this process 0.01%. And then if it, you know, if I like it next year, 0.02%. Great. Okay. That's my eternal benefit. They have become a state part of it. Great. Okay. And that's different than in the name of the process, we're doing something that's actually a violation of the process. And in order to know, and there's a lot of violations going, there's a lot of violations of the process going on in the name of the process. There was even when Prabhupada had the pre-77 Baku, and he would make he would help devotees make distinctions, sometimes through gentle instruction sometimes some thunderbolt like chastisement like that so so it's a great question it's a great discussion because it's very sobering there's a lot of there's a lot of violations of the actual process in the name of the process and that's dangerous and so we need to be like really like really need to know Prabhupada, his his, his life his activities to know that distinction. Thank you. Can you could you give an example that uh, maybe something that is going on right now or maybe that was going on recently? That's an example of this something in the process that's actually going against the process. Um, I guess the problem is I could give it. I could give ten examples. Oh. What's that? Important. Yeah, I mean, th yeah. There's there's there, there's a lot happening in that name. Um, um yeah. yeah 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 so uh well okay this isn't right now but there's there's one thing in um because it can it can be subtle <laughs> and sometimes not so subtle. in in Kaupa's purport really he actually gives a bogus mantra but the mantra is completely composed of names of God. I think the bogus mantra is um, um, Hare Krishna, Hare Ram, Nitai Gora, Radhe Sham, Radhe Sh something like that. Okay, where it's 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 an inappropriate mixing. Like no, you don't you don't want to Lord Chaitanya and Krishna aren't happy if you have Nitai Gora and Radhe Sham in the same mantra. 
Okay. So Prabhupada gave that because like there were many people chanting that. There, there, there were many, many people who probably still are. Yeah. Um, it's, it's pretty common. Okay. So that's an example. Now it's not all bad, but it can interfere with someone's progress for many lifetimes because it can cause confusion. It's not all bad because we are chanting the name Radharani and Gora Sundar. So there is benefit for sure. At the same time, it's done away, it's done in a way that's not authorized. So it can cause confusion, blocks in the heart, like that. So that's probably gives that very specific example. Okay. And you know, I'll I'll mention like um so yeah, develop develop like your knowledge of Prabhupada, his life and his teachings. Both, both are important. Just like I gave some examples from his life, which you won't you won't find in the books about the Gopi Baba Club or things like that. Okay. So um and then you know I, I can think of I can think of members of this community who um I've appreciated very much where you know maybe they haven't read all of Prabhupada's books or maybe they didn't read it, but because they were just like very sincere to serve Prabhupada. I'm thinking back over the years, over the years. And um and several in several instances, they would just they would get something in their email box or they would hear something from someone who's a senior devotee. And they would sometimes come to me like, yeah, I mean, it sounded nice, but it just didn't seem right. And they had the intuition, they had the sincerity to serve Prabhupada, and even though maybe they couldn't define it, but they, um, they, they would say there's something, and then, and then we could, and then it was my service, Malini's service, to help them make, make the philosophical distinctions. So, um, so many examples. And you kind of like, yeah, like be uh, not like on guard, like closed, but uh, like ha have your powers of discretion alive and active. Have your powers of discretion alive and active. And that, uh, so just like if you notice something, then, you know, I know I'm, I'm available to talk if, if you notice something that seems like, well, it sounds like Krishna consciousness, but I'm not sure if this is what Prabhupada's giving. And then um, you know, so I know I'm, I'm available if that's helpful. Thank you, Ezra. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna, uh, Mother Padma Yes, I'm from Singapore. Hare Krishna Prabhu. I just want to pick up from your question regarding the Ravan and the Ram analogy that you gave. Now with the extensive uh, changes made to Srila Prabhupada's original works, over the years there's been so many different, you know, changes made. Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, and I'm sure a lot more is going on at the moment. How can, I mean, is it fair to say that the people who are in charge are acting more like Ravana than Ram and they are in the disguise I mean, they are basically disguising themselves as Ram because they are devotees basically making these changes, aren't they? I mean, would it be fair to say that they are more, they are basically acting like Raman rather than Ram and they are cheating the public because uh, Prabhupada's original words no longer exist and every change made makes a change in meaning. And as we know, you know, the whole context will change. Yeah. Thank, thank you for sharing. And thanks, thanks for your sharing and question. It's certainly a very um, great, just like Prabhupada's disappearance. It's it's glorious and transcendental, and it's grave. And you know what what you express, Mataji, it's it's grave. <clears throat> um, okay, I'll 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 share a bit. Um, experience and realization. Yeah, I was. Uh, I see. Uh, S.D. Canary, Mother Rukmini is here. And uh, actually, I know her from 1983, Italy, and then after that, um, Israel. And I was, I was back to Dave in Israel in 1984. Um, <clears throat> and um, I remember Jayadvaita Swami. Oh, he's the 
well, I don't know the position, but basically the director of the Bhaktivedanta Book Trust, and he's certainly the main editor of, uh, of the Bhagavad Gita. Okay. And uh, anyhow, so he visited Israel, and I developed a relationship with him from that time. He was saying, the Jai Beta Swami. And he was a mentor for me. We, we, we kibitzed around. <laughs> we did. We were, we, were, we were making jokes. <laughs> um, what's that? A couple of yeah, a couple, a couple of mentions. Yeah, you got the language. You got the Yiddish going on. We were a couple of mentions, precisely. Yeah, I remember in, in 84, we were about to go on Harinam in Tel Aviv. All the devotees were there. And I, I asked him, have you ever been to Israel? And he said, no, but I'm from Miami Beach. It's pretty much the same. Okay, stay with me on this. Sometimes I get diverted with jokes, but. <laughs> Some people may not understand this part. Yeah, okay. So anyhow, in fact, in, in 2013, before Jai Vaita Swami, he was about to visit Gainesville, Alachua for some time. And he goes, well, I'm going to be there for a week. Let's hang out. And so um, you know, we hung out for like six hours. In addition to Gibbetson, we actually talked about some serious stuff related to Srila Prabhupada's movement. Starting in the late 90s, I would correspond with Jai Vaita Swami. There, there was one. There was one where... I was actually chairman of the board of directors of this kind of a Latchway, New Raman Reti at that time. I essentially served in that role for about seven years. And I had just conducted an Ishtagoshti in the temple room. And then afterwards, I, I was sitting in the back and I was just doing some reading. I was in my cycle of reading Paul's books. I was starting Chaitanya Charitamrita. And I was on page one of Chaitanya Charitamrita. And I just noticed Something was different than the other four or five times I had read it. This was 1999, maybe 98, 98. Something was different. Then when I went back home, I looked and I go, oh, oh, it is. Oh, it is um, um, different. And I saw that they had come out with a new edition, which I hadn't uh, ever seen before. And that was the edition that was there in the temple. And then I, so what the change, the change relates, there was, a, well, okay. So, okay, the change, or some might say the adulteration, relates to what we're talking about. On the first page of Chaitanya Charitamrita, Prabhupada writes that um, um, Jagannath Das Babaji initiated Bhakti Vinod Thakur, and Bhakti Vinod Thakur initiated um, Gorkishor Das Babaji. Mm -hmm. Now, we know from history, in both of those pairs of relationship, never was there a formal initiation ceremony. But Prabhupada used the term initiate like that. Now, when I saw, when I noticed, oh, there's a change, I assumed, I was more innocent than I am now, I assumed that it's because the original editors, maybe they didn't understand Prabhupada's accent on the dictaphone or whatever, and and the new, the new edition is actually what Prabhupada said. I really assume. So I wrote to Jayabhita Swami, my kibitzing around friend from 18 years earlier. And, and I said, well, yeah, is, is it that just like the editors didn't understand the, the accent or something like that? And Jayabhita Swami referred me to Dravida Prabhu, who's also a, a leader in the BBT. And I appreciate it, and I still appreciate it. Whenever I've written to them, they've been very responsive and straightforward. And we exchange in correspondence. There's nothing private. I publish this correspondence on the internet <laughs> with their permission and, and other, like that. And, with it. and so, but really, it's so like these letters are available. Maybe some of you have read some of my writing. And they said, no, no, it's not that the original entries in here Prabhupada, but they said that Prabhupada's use of the word initiation is not consistent with the way initiation is understood um, in this con today. So 
So when I got that, it was when I kind of like needed to turn the page this way and that way. Okay. I'm making jokes, but I don't want to diminish the fact this is a very serious matter. Okay. This way and that way. And um, I said, what? And, I, and I, then I, I responded, I said, well, what? Like, well, that's, no, it's like, no, if someone wants to write a book about your view of what initiation we are, great, write books. But to change Prabhupada's philosophy and then to put Prabhupada's name on it, I said, that, that doesn't work. That, you know, that, 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 that's wrong. That's wrong. And, and I, as I've often said, any sincere follower of Prabhupada should be outraged. This is a good time for transcendental anger, okay? Because this was clear. They didn't say, well, we change it for grammar or for the poetic flow of the English. No, Prabhupada's use of the term doesn't match the governing body commissions. So we're saying King Prabhupada's term. Fine, don't put Prabhupada's name on the book anymore. Okay. I wrote internet articles about it. And ultimately, at least on that one, it was a few years later in 2005, I was strolling along at the Sunday feast at New Raman Reti, and Jai Beta Swami was at the table, and he saw me from a distance and goes, Dear Gavinadas, come here. So I came, and there was Jai Beta Swami. And he said, Yeah, like he said, we, we've been discussing what you wrote to us about for six years. And we, we, we just spent three days on that one thing, a big BT, BBT meeting in, I don't know where it was, India or somewhere. And we decided, you actually have a good point. And then what, what he said was um, that the, um, the, the next edition will, they, they won't keep the, the change that, that, that they put. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, so, you know, Prabhupada's books are meant to be the, the guidebooks for at least 10,000 years. And so, um, particularly, and that, that's just one because. It's not the only place where the philosophy is changed. So that's a big problem. Um, it's, that's a big problem. And, uh, and, and now, at the same time, Prabhupada's pre-1978 books, like this is a pre-1978 version of Chaitanya Charitamrita. I, in my reading, I, my reading and teaching, Go with the pre pre nineteen seventy eight Bhagavad Gita as it is, so they are uh, st still available. Uh, at, at the same time, there is a sort of there has been and is. Yeah, I know one friend who actually we might see in a few days. One friend he, he has this amazing project he's been doing for Prabhupada. I won't go into details, but he um and his project has been connected with. Iskand temples. And he, with his own money, he, he purchased 10,000 10, copies of the pre-78 Bhagavad Gita as it is. And he, I, I'm not happy to say this, but he was warned that if you if you distribute even you know, one of those, you know, you you you'll you'll for this whole lifetime you'll never have an opportunity to to do your service connected with you know our our temples again so um it's certainly not for me to say where is someone coming from someone's coming from a lower planet to you know Prabhupada gives indications of those things but it's not for me to to give those judgments and so you know I just gave one example and I know you're aware Mataji that unfortunately there's not just one or two or three examples um, there's many, many where it's not just, even changing the grammar, it could be some controversial, but changing the philosophy and that has happened, that's a problem. And that's why I'm, you know, personally preferring the, the, the pre-78 books. You know, I've shared my, my actually, I'm, I'm going to share, I, um, so about eight, nine months ago, and I was watching a video online video with, it was an interview with Garuda Das, Professor Graham Schwab. He's a intellectual professor in universities. And he, um, a few years ago, he be, kind of became aware that these book changes 
I'd say some of them are not changes, they're adulterations to what Prabhupada gave. And so he, and you know, so they were, someone was interviewing him. And in the interview, he was talking about how he and so many have experienced with Jayabhata Swami that like he's not open, he won't hear anything like that. And he was saying in the interview that he was saying to Jayabhata Swami that like, yeah, you're just completely shut down. You won't hear anything from anybody. And I was watching this interview and Garuda said to his interviewer, and then Jayabhata Swami said, well, what about my communications with Gira Govinda Das? <laughs> no, no, yeah, I, I appreciated that. Because Jayabhata Swami was making the point that, well, if someone approaches me, in a particular spirit, I'm very happy to exchange with him. And Jai Bhakti Swami, he, he has admitted where he made mistakes in, and like that. Sometimes we've agreed to disagree in a gentlemanly way. But he, Garuda said, Jai Bhakti Swami said, well, with Yoga Vinda Das, we exchange just fine. And, and we have different points of view like that. So that's my experience of him. And certainly, so, so, whether you call it mistake or, or deliberate Ravana attempts, you know, we can all give our interpretation at the same time. Um, for, for sure, you know, there are some philosophical changes and then that becomes worse than useless. That's very dangerous. So that's why I, I have a very respectful, friendly communication with Jared Swami, and he knows I choose to read and teach from the pre-78 books. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Parampara Prabhu. I appreciate the um, nuance that you give when you're speaking about many different things. Yeah, I can think of the four regular principles you ask the question, what's your relationship with the four regulative principles? Yeah. Rather than, are you following the yeah. four regular? Yes or no? Okay, yes. Yes or no. But uh, what's your relationship with the four regular principles? It's open ended, it's like an exploration of yeah. where, where am I really at? And so, whenever you're speaking about Ravana and Ram, you know, it's very easy to, well, I'm in Ram's camp. Uh, obviously. I, obviously, look, I'm right here. I'm in Ram's camp. This is Ram's camp, right? So um, it's very easy, black and white, to say, say that. And then, but then you went on further to say, you know, what areas of my yeah. life might I be, what areas might I be coming from Robin's camp? Okay, well, that's more, uh, uh, that's, so that's that's, not as easy. That, that, that's more nuanced, more nuanced, where it's not so easy to say, of course, I'm in Robin's camp. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, okay, wow. Because even because even then okay then even there okay there's different camps and, okay so uh, yeah that's Ravana's camp that's Ram's camp then to, to to open it up even more to say well the essence of Ravana's mentality is yeah. to enjoy simply without Ram right. right. and so well, it's not even about camps anymore okay yeah. just yeah. he's obviously in the Ravana camp. Yeah. Okay, well, we can go back to there. And do this this way. He's he is sincerely serving you know, with ourselves too. So yeah, it's not so uh, comfortable or easy to, to look at it that way. Of, uh, right, because uh, as we're honest, we I, I can easily see where I, I definitely have a Robin mentality yeah. and uh, trying to enjoy the benefits I get from Prabhupada and things like that. Right. And let, let's get Prabhupada out. Let me enjoy do the same. So right. I appreciate that you're highlighting that part. Yeah, it's not, it's not as easy. It's much more responsibility there to take a deeper look, to deep dive deeper and more honesty and, uh, and uh, humility to, um, you know, sincerely uh to, to really take the responsibility to be um serving Shri Prabhupada in, in his mission and it's not a rubber stamp you know Prabhupada said you know um he used that phrase rubber stamp rubber stamp, rubber stamp, yeah. guru, rubber stamp uh religion or whatever so it's like it's not just rubber stamp oh I'm Prabhupada because yeah. I follow Prabhupada and Prabhupada yeah. thinking it can just be the same thing 
into um it can be another camp mentality another camp mentality another another false ego yeah. upadi yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll, I'll say one more thing just in um you know glorification of Sri Papa on this, this appearance day is that um uh, something that's a lie for me um is that we were 42 years or so after Sri Prabhupada's disappearance and um 43 43 43, 43 years after Sri Prabhupada's disappearance and he's so much more available mm. than he was mm. in his uh in, in, the, in the 60s and the 70s that um through his his books are so much more readily available. I saw one day when he said, so many more people are reading Prabhupada's books yeah, now yeah. in the 60s or 70s. Well, actually, I guess that's how so many people are really reading and studying, but at least have them. Yes, yes. <laughs> at least uh, are available. So many more books are available. So what kind of books are we getting quality? But just in general, Prabhupada's books, his recordings, yes. uh, his bhajans, his letters, his conversations, it's all widely distributed, so much so accessible. He's so much more available to the devotee, to his disciple, to a sincere follower than he was in the 60s. In the 60s, you had a few, you had a few yeah. books, and maybe a letter would come, and then yes. everybody would get excited about the letter that would come to one devotee and all read the temple. And so uh, there's not as many recordings were available. True. So True. um Prabhupada is so much more available mm, in yeah. his form than, uh, than he was. And so we are at a very great advantage to be uh, you know, in his time. And uh, his potency is just, just you know, ever fresh and expanding. That, that, thanks for that wonderful perspective. Yeah, yeah. Pra Prabhupada's presence and availability, it's not less, it's, it's expansive. No, the only thing is that coming. <laughs> well, you can download it. Yeah, and it, it is it is glorifying the internet. It, th thank you, from Prabhu. They didn't, you know, they didn't have access to video from the internet, to recordings and right. the and so on. The fact that videos were not really available in the day. Even pictures. Somebody you could get picture. somebody pictures now of a miracle of the Prabhu. Yeah, yeah. 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 This is a wonderful point, and your comment, Melanie, you're glorifying the internet. Yes, yeah, this is this is the sublime. This is what internet was made for, to have discussions like this, glorifying Prabhupada, transcendental philosophy based on Chaitanya Charitamrita. Um, Sarah. Hi, Krishna. Um, Hi, Krishna. I was just feeling so much gratitude for having like forgetting to experience that I don't, I don't haven't much thought about like in my life stress. Oh, this is Prabhupada's words. This is not Prabhupada's words. Um, because I, I, I feel I get a direct connection and I've been reading more lately. And every time I come across some words in Prabhupada's books that are like directly from a Sattva Tov experience, like don't fight with the obstacles of Maya. It's just it's so right there. I feel so much appreciation for getting to have like already in my body and my experience, like a sweetness there from an experience in my life that it makes reading this treasure hunt. Mm -hmm. And I just, I feel so much appreciation for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks for sharing your heartfelt Gratitude. I'm moved. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Hare Krishna. Gajendra Prabhu. Um, yeah, I just wanted to um, comment on a nice connection that I feel I had in personal reflection from some things that you were saying. Um, you used the word useless. Um, in other words, that we should try to be useful. 
not useless. And you also spoke, um, I think in some ways kind of strongly for, for this group about the order of the spiritual master. It's kind of having 1970s, 80s flashbacks, actually. There was kind of a, a seriousness to it, kind of a mood. And I was remembering a class that I heard uh, a learned Vaishnava giving, and the class actually had a name called Don't Be a Useless Finger. And the idea of it is it, a finger is incredibly useful. We use our finger all the time when it's connected to the body. But if our, if our finger is disconnected from the body, it's not really very useful anymore. It might be a problem to try to get it attached, but it's not useful. And so I was making the connection. Uh, yes, you know, we want to be connected to the source. We want to serve the source. We want to have the, the energy, the shakti of the source to engage in service. And it is that very thing, the order of the spiritual master, which uh, connects us to the, not, not a my vasana, but the body of the Lord, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. And so I was just, uh, somehow I, Maybe it was said way back then, but I missed it. But I'm just getting that it's, it is the, the order of the spiritual master that is the difference between connection and disconnection to our service, to our clarity, to the power to do our service. And that's you know why should the Prabhupada emphasize the order of his spiritual master from the time he met Bhakti Siddhanta to when he, you know, when you came over. Um, so I was just a, a, appreciating that you had brought up that word useless and the trigger that it was for my memory and then coupling that with the order of the spiritual master. Um, I also... <clears throat> I'll, just, I'll just interject. Yeah, I did, I, I did use that heavy language and I usually don't use language like that at this mm. time, at the same time. In this particular verse, in the verse and purport, Prabhupada used that term useless. So just following in the spirit of this particular verse and purport. Yeah. I'm so happy, so happy for that bit of reality. Um, I will also uh, slightly um, touch upon um, how hard it is how hard it is for me to hear the discussion um, about you know other Vaishnavas book changes people in ISKCON um, I, I'm not I don't really have anything to say um, about any details of, or any positions or things like that. Uh, it just feels very hard on me because it just feels like um, criticisms of Vaishnavas. And that may not be what it is, but it's sort of like I, um, I'm, I mean, you I just feel that a lot of these devotees are very, very sincere. And there, there may be some, you know, lower people, demon people, I mean, that, that can be, but a lot of the people we're talking about love Srila Prabhupada very much. And I think they're, they're sincere as they know how to be. And if there's a flaw or not a flaw, it's just very hard for me to hear It's very hard for me to hear. That's all. Thanks for sharing, Prabhu. Yeah, I hear it's, uh, it's, uh, these are can be painful discussions, and what what you said about their sincerity, I uh, I resonate with. That was a big part of what I was trying to convey in sharing some of my personal experiences. Yeah. 
around these you know, sometimes painful topics. And just so maybe light, lighten it, or is uh, I do happen to know that Jai Dwayda Swami's pre initiation name was Jay Israel. Jai Israel. There's, a, there's another connection there. Uh, Hare Krishna, thank you. Hare Krishna. Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Ki. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Hare Krishna. I want to sing Jamil a song when I want to stay, when I come to stay. So keep the internet. I'm officially in the now. I'm still a first year. We are going to sing a song from now.